blueberries and welcome to the latest guide featuring the plague now the reason I decided to cover plague is for uh, the obvious reasons the new tome features Bill Overbeck and the plague now the thing is plague by behavior statistics is shown to be the one of the least played killers and also the killer with the lowest kill rate this is not because the killer is weak she is very very strong but a lot of people don't play her correctly she is not a traditional killer and her uh, gameplay and style really really differs depending on the add-ons you take with you she's very uh, convoluted but is very rewarding especially if you know how to play her correctly now, in this vi this uh, guide might be a little bit longer, but I assure you guys, if you stay here, you will be able to understand the true potential of this amazing killer and how much fun it is truly to play with her. Now, let's go over her attributes and power. So, her attributes are rather the same, 4.6 speed, 115%, 32 meter radius, and she's a tall killer. When she charges up her power b before the bar is full, she drops to 92%, and when she, her, her power is fully charged up, like the bar is full, she walks at 110, I think. 110 or 105%. You'll get the feel for it the more you play her. Her power is quite complex plague has two types of vomit one of them is vile purge and the other one is corrupt purge vile purge is what plague has uh, for the most part it's what you begin your match with and it's what uh, and it's the the ticket to get your corrupt purge vile purge is a uh, plague's uh, green vomit her default vomit and when she hits survivors with it they will get infected. The more you spray on a survivor, the faster his timer will go until he is fully infected. When the survivor is fully infected, he suffers from the broken status effect, which means he cannot heal in any way, not by teammates, not with medkits. His only way of getting rid of this is by cleansing himself in a, in a uh, pool, in one of those uh, basins of water. When a survivor does that, he immediately is healed and goes back to being a fully uh, healed survivor. The second he cleans himself in one of these basins, the basin waters becomes dirty, infected. That's the moment you as the plague can interact with, uh, with the said pool. When you uh, ingest the black waters of a fouled basin, you will be able to unlock your more potent ability called Corrupt Purge. Corrupt Purge is a, is a, works the same way as Vile Purge. The only difference is that the damage that you give to the survivors is instantaneous. Which means that this black vomit that you get from a pool immediately injures a survivor upon hitting them. There is no broken status effect, there is no mangle status effect, they just take a hit. And the, fa the fact that Plague can charge up this power so quickly, and the fact that she can spray for so long, and from any angle and distance, makes her Corrupt Purge a very, very dangerous weapon. So survivors really have two options. Either they don't cleanse to try and prevent the Plague to from having the black uh, corrupt purge as much as possible thus risking themselves and being injured through the entire game or they cleanse as much as they can to try and stay healthy what type of gameplay that uh, they should go with that entirely depends on the survivors the thing is if all of uh, the the pools of devotion are contaminated if all seven uh, fountains are black they all get instantly cleansed and the plague gets corrupt purge at that given moment without interacting with the pool of devotion <clears throat> that is bad because after you lose 
that corrupt purge, survivors can neglect cleansing and you will be stuck with no corrupt purge because your power is dependent on the survivors. I know this is a lot to take in, but this will make sense as we play the game. Now, let's go over uh, Plague's uh, teachables. A lot of players should consider uh, unlocking this killer as quickly as possible. She has some of the most crucial perks for many, many killers. She, all three of her perks are absolutely amazing, but the first two perks are very crucial for certain killers. Corrupt Intervention is a must on certain killers, which is an unfortunate reality in Red Ranks. Corrupt Purge makes it so that the three farthest gens from the killer at the start of the trial are blocked for 120 seconds on the last level, for 2 minutes. That is great for killers that are either slow or that capitalize on a certain part of the map. Killers like Hag and Trapper that don't want to spread out and want to trap a specific part of the map will use Corrupt to not lose gens in the distance as quickly. Michael Myers, Huntress and Deathslinger, killers that move slowly on big maps, want to, uh, to have less gens to protect. That way they'll be able to uh, make a lot of damage and Michael Myers can grow in power and not lose as many gens. A very, very important perk to a lot of killers, and one should, that should not be scuffed at. Infectious Fright is another very strong perk, very common on killers such as Oni, uh, strong Billy players, maybe even an Ambitious Blight, a Nurse, all of the killers that are able to capitalize from one survivor to another. What this very terrifying perk does is that the second a survivor drops into the dying state all other survivors in the terror radius of the killer scream and reveal their location in a form of a black bubble not a following aura but the killer gets a general loca location of where the survivor is at and for killers that can move instantly and down survivors quickly gain a lot of mileage from this perk Dark Devotion is not a strong perk, but is a very fun one. Essentially what it does is, regardless of the size of your terror radius, when you ba hit the obsession with a basic attack, a terror radius of 32 meters is attached to the obsession, and you lose your terror radius. For the next 30 seconds, the obsession will have a terror radius of 32 meters, while you lose yours. That goes along with your red light. You become undetectable for, uh, on your end. Those are Plague's perks, a very very important killer to unlock if you want to try to get to higher ranks. Um, quite convoluted with her power, but I'm gonna help you guys, we're gonna go through this. I wanna help you all so you'll be able to finish these archives, they are not easy. I've heard of a few people being uh, struggling and... Uh, that is exactly why I'm here. <laughs> so, the main problem with for beginner players with Plague is that a lot of people, let's say, that have only the base kit game, and let's say only Plague, will lack, will lack um, slowdown and map pressure. But there are a lot of perks that uh, fit this killer well, mainly from the beginner killers. What's so good about Plague is that her own perks suit her very, very well. Corrupt, uh, Corrupt Intervention is a great perk because three generators are blocked and the other four gens, you can vomit on them and the infection stays on any and all objects that you vomit on with the vile purge, the green vomit. So if a survivor interacts with that item, they become sick. Three gens blocked, the four remaining gens try to vomit on them. If any survivor touches them, they will get uh, sick over time and they will get injured. Infectious Fright, a very, very strong perk on Plague. Plague uh, with the Corrupt Purge is able to down and capitalize on survivors very quickly. 
with this perk in hand. I personally have never played a plague with infectious fright, but if you have a situation where you can use it, you will use it and you will down several survivors at the same time. Very good perk for plague indeed. Bitter Murmur, unfortunately for beginners that have only the base kit game and only the plague, people who don't have Pop Goes the Weasel or Ruin will lose gens, and that is okay. We'll be using Bitter Murmur so any and all gens that pop, we can see those survivors from a distance with an aura and we will hit them from very far away with the vomit with a green vomit or the corrupt purge and gain a lot of damage and might be able to even snowball with infectious fright if a few survivors sat on the same gin tinker sort of contradicts with infectious because tinker makes it so that my un uh, that my uh, that my tear radius drops to nil for 16 seconds but but this will give me information, what gens do I need to protect most. Tinker is a very good perk. If you don't feel like going with Tinker, that is perfectly understandable. I can also recommend a perk by the nurse, Thanatophobia. Um, I would say that Plague is probably the best user of this uh, perk, aside from Legion. The thing is, I see that Plagues make a lot of mistakes, especially beginner Plagues, is that they choose to chase the same survivor all the time don't do that it takes a long time to fully infect a survivor with your vile purge if you don't have the right add-ons it can take you even a minute it's totally not worth it if you don't have any add-ons that increase the infective the effectiveness of your uh, green vomit you should try to spit on the survivor a little bit make them uh, slightly infected and just wait for time to do its thing. I'm just taking an offering for blood points, nothing that uh, changes gameplay, and we will get into a match as Plague. So, three farthest gens get blocked, right? So that gen got blocked, that gen got blocked, and that, that gen got blocked. Not the best, but let's prepare to vomit. Contagious, you see? So that means I hit the gen. The gen for the next 45 seconds will be infected. So if any person touches that, they'll get infected. And that's great for us. Forty-five seconds. Let's put on this gen down here. They can't touch the three other gens, and these gens exactly. Someone got sick. They wanted to wor start working on the gen, and then now time will do its thing. Huh? She knows. It doesn't matter to me. The more she moves, the more actions she does. They will all get sick. They will all get infected. I missed. These survivors are acting very strange. They're cleansing. She's trapped. I'll capitalize only with my green vomit. And now I can grab her. When you injure someone with your green vomit, they don't get the boost of speed. So you can use that for your advantage and immediately capitalize with a basic attack. Two gens almost done. We don't have any slowdown. That is very, very unfortunate. Let's hit this gen. Make it hurt. There I go. I'll basic attack you if you're going to go for the save. She 4%ed. That is A-OK -okay with me. This girl is not paying attention. Told you.
they're cleansing very very quickly if all seven fountains get get full then i'll lose my power that is not a good thing i mean i'll gain my power but i will have to trade all seven fountains to get one power of corrupt purge that is not good this girl is going back to the hook i'm gonna make it hurt This map is doing some serious damage to me. Bitter Murmur gave me some information. The survivor went that way. She probably thinks she's safe from barbecue. But she's not safe from Bitter Murmur. Plague is glowing when this power is active. As you can see, I have sparks of, of a sort. To notify about sur uh, survivors from the danger of this ability. She's hit. That's another survivor hit. That's okay, I'll hit you. You better believe it. Mm hmm. Told you. And there you go. That's two survivors on the ground. Told you. And I also know that the flashy is not here. Infectious Fright would have given me that information. Let's put her on the hook. Funny thing is, you can infect survivors that are not even, uh, like, look at this, she's not infected, right? Now when she gets off the hook, the timer will begin to go, and she will get infected as time progresses. Very, very useful, and I am definitely gonna use that. These two girls are now not infected. That's alright, basic attack will do. Bad idea. I can hear you. Try to use your ears when the survivor is running away injured. There you go. Now she'll get infected as she gets removed from the hook next time. Actually, she's dead on hook, so it doesn't really matter. But you get the point. Let's put her on the hook. She's dead. Pick up this vomit. So they won't fill up all of your fountains. Be very, very careful of that. Not sure where they are. My power has been a little bit wasted. But they're right now in a bad position. Three gens. They're still cleansing. They cleansed over there. That fountain was uh, the one I took from. If you get hit with a pallet, you lose your power, so be very, very careful. She's on the outskirts here. You can keep cleansing as much as you want, dearie. If they keep cleansing, I'll just get more and more of my power. They're gonna get punished for that. Damn it. Dumbass. Nuh uh. Capitalizing, capitalizing, capitalizing. There you go. You're gonna get punished for these decisions, boys. You're doing gens, but I'm getting a lot of hooks for this. Put on the gen so the Meg w w uh, will hesitate to touch this. And if she will touch it, she will get injured. No problem. She'll get injured over time. My, my apologies. That Kate really wanted to stun me to make me lose my power. Ain't gonna happen. We're not gonna give it to her that easy. I'll keep collecting my power. I've got more than enough fountains active. They healed under the hook. I'm going back there. It's 
Scratches. Scratch marks in here. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. These scratch marks are very old. I'm very, very far away from her. Let's break this pallet. Get it out of the way. Very uncomfortable, that. Nice. You get infected if you touch someone who's fully infected. Not who's someone who's a little infected. Very important to know that. Down she goes. And down you go. Should have not done this, Jen. It was too damn obvious. If she touched this gen, she has no DS. Yep, she touched the gen. Or she had no DS to begin with. I see that, Kate. I'm gonna pretend I haven't. You can hit through survivors. You see? It hits Kate fully. Nice. That's a lot of damage. My green vomit, despite it hit Meg, it went through and hit Kate as well. Probably gonna check if it's in the main building. Most obvious place to see it. No, -uh, it's not here. Keep looking. That's a hit. Yep. It's your own corrupt purge that you cleansed. And I'm not gonna show any mercy. You chose this horrible map. Don't be afraid to lose gens. Gonna give you information with better murmur. And if you have the corrupt purge, you're gonna cause so much damage to the survivors that greet for that gen. Yeah, the matchmaking is a bit scuffed. But you understand the whole idea here. What I've done with that Kate towards the end when I vomited on her, that is because I knew she's not experienced enough uh, to to dodge it. Most survivors will wiggle left to right, so you'll hit them only a little bit with your vomit, and it's impractical to chase someone like that. If a survivor's wigg if a survivor wiggles a lot, this is what usually red ranks would do. You spit on them a little bit, so the infectivity will do its thing over time, and you basic attack them and send them on their merry way. But that's the beginner build for the plague. So, for the advanced players, I would recommend a build uh, something like this. The, the reason for this is because plague utilizes uh, slowdown perks and information perks the best. She doesn't need insta-down perks in my opinion all that much and she doesn't really need uh, chasing perks. Her... Abilities are quite formidable on their own, especially when she's carrying the the corrupt purge, which is a ver uh, which is very potent. And even if you won't have corrupt purge throughout the entire game, you'll for the most part only need to nail one hit because survivors will be broken most of the time. So you, you don't really need anything to help you in chases or in insta downs. I I went for this build because. I think Blake it can finish games rather quickly. Uh, you could swap up uh, like Undying for Pop Goes in addition to Ruin as like a backup plan. 
You can take uh, Infectious Fright somewhere here. You can put on Thanatophobia. She's one of the best users of this perk. So for the most part, you want to go for slowdown or information perks. Information perks because you'll be able to cause a lot of damage with your corrupt purge. And slow down for the obvious reasons. It's what most is necessary in red ranks. I'm taking Tinker because Tinker works well. Doesn't matter how many people are sitting on a gen. If I would take Discordance, a gen might pop and I won't even know how close it is to being done. And if any of my hexes begins to die, Retribution is going to show me the aura of all survivors across the entire map. This is what the Retribution does for the most part. And uh, Rune will be that monster that regresses Jen, especially at the start of the game. Now, when it comes to add-ons, Plague's, pl Plague's playstyle d uh, changes a lot depending on her add-ons. Now, I'm not gonna like go into a deep detail guide on every single add-on, but I want to uh, cover like uh, a few uh, concepts about these add-ons, especially the, the most common ones. You've got the incest ointment and the potent tincture. Now, I run these add-ons quite a lot, you see me play them on stream. It makes it so that Plague can charge up her vomit after she charges and uses it, she recovers very quickly and can either vomit again or basic attack. This makes it very comfortable to use the, the Vile Purge in a chase. Even with just one, one of these add-ons, it, it becomes much more uh, comfortable to use, so to speak. And then you got uh, add-ons like Vile Emetic, Infected Emetic. Which makes it so that the survivors get sicker faster from the green vomit. Again, you gotta vomit on them less, it's more potent, very good add-ons. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the potent tincture and the incense tinct tincture, it says that it decreases the cooldown of uh, the vile purge. But I think it also decreased the cooldown on the corrupt purge, making her uh, corrupt purge very, very terrifying. Uh, you got the Blessed Apple that adds one Corrupted Pool from the start of the match. Uh, I personally don't take both of them together because then you're gonna have three pools and if you infect all four survivors then they're just gonna cleanse themselves very quickly and all the basins will get cleansed. So I don't know, you should probably choose one of them. That's, that's at least my opinion. Some add-ons here decrease the duration of her Corrupt Purge. I don't really feel like it's necessary. I think her power lasts for a good amount of time as is. 45 seconds is quite noticeable. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's about it. I mean, like this makes it so that you charge your Vile Purge faster. And survivors get, get infected faster from touching objects. This is not really that impressive. But yeah. This is what you, you want to go for as Plague when you're playing on Red Ranks. Utilize the aura reading, the information to uh, potentially snowball. Down a few survivors at the same time, whether if it's two, three, or even the entire team. Use Ruin, Pop Goes, Corrupt to protect your generators. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You usually want to go for those type of perks. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the advanced... Uh, build game. See you all in the match. Alright. So. This situation really makes me happy. A lot of uh, survivors who don't feel really confident about their teammates usually rely on taking medkits. Mainly because they're playing solo queue. And that is where Plague is very, very dastardly because these medkits won't do them much good unless if I'm hitting them with corrupt purge. Either way, they're gonna have to cleanse at the start, and those medkits might uh, prove useless if they don't. So, we play Plague 
as she should be played. I apply pressure on gens with ruin. I know where to go, thanks to Tinker. My ruin is in a horrible spot. Wait. Actually, I have three totems. Every totem is in a horrible spot. This is Shelter Woods. She's stuck. By getting stuck in a corner and vomiting on her from point blank, she couldn't leave. Like I said, you don't lose collision if you are hit by the vile perch. Very nice. We're off to an amazing start. Takes a heckin' long amount of time. Doesn't matter. I'll take the hook. Nice. That was great. She wasted the pallet, I didn't get stunned. And I also vomited on her a little bit. LD felt exposed. I see her. That was very stupid. Deadard. She felt very confident. Nope. Didn't get any information with retribution, but I was okay. I still got the hook. Okay, thank you. That was fast. They know where my totem is. I have to go back there. That is an abysmally ridiculous totem. If that ruin gets destroyed, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna hook you. He chose to work on a gen. You don't have DS. Didn't expect to see me here that quickly, did you? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know you wanted my ruin, baby. Someone... You guys have to leave that gen. You guys have to leave that gen to save your teammates. I'm gonna make it hurt. I'm gonna put her in the basement. There's no shack. I mean, there's no pallet at shack here. You guys are in a bad situation right now. Cute. You guys are not leaving. Not without me making some collateral damage. DS? You don't have it. Tough shit. Or, she, or you missed it. The corrupt purge is very, very potent. Perfectly fine with that.
Nice. She got rid of my corrupt purge by stunning me with a pallet. They're finishing another gen there. I'm okay with that. You can take the gen. I'll take the skate and put her out of the game. Derrit? A key. Fine by me. That girl's working on a gen. There's the LED. I'm gonna knock this girl down since she's injured. It's gonna be much easier to down this one. Derrit? That it? Yep. Not impressed. Oh, that's very good. Let's put you on the hook. You don't want to do that. That's death. Now he can follow up on this girl. Thanks to the cooldown add-on, I was able to recover very, very quickly. And that was the end of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, he actually doesn't matter. I'm gonna go and hook that girl. Sorry, I'm I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna give it my damnest. N no reason to spare you. Not after I've seen that key. They're going on the hook. Thank you, Elodie. Now my ears are bleeding. Yes. No. I, I even let you use it. I don't think 60 seconds passed. I know I really was not able to showcase the usefulness of retribution, but we still were able to use Ruin and Dying for our advantage. Tinker gave us information, but I just chose to ruthlessly kill everyone and focus on, on Plague rather than focusing on the perks. Using the Corrupt Purge, using the add-ons, and being able to get very, very quick hooks. GG, we'll play it all. But as that is the reason why, in my opinion, this killer is A rank. Killers of lower tier... Um, count on their perks, sometimes even more than on their power. Plague is able to hold her own and is able to cause a lot of damage even without uh, perks. Stank. Stanky yank. Stinky. Call me stinky. Oh no 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 no! You you can't take plunder's instinct and put this shit. You can't do that, man. Like this guarantees that Shaq spawns at hatch, uh, that <laughs> that hatch spawns at Shaq, and come on, give me a, give me a break. When did we ever not take plunder's instinct and didn't get a key? Don't feel even remotely bad for playing that way. So. Thank you all so much for watching. I I hope this sort of helps you uh, to play Plague. Actually enjoy this amazing and very powerful killer. And if you if this killer is not your cup of tea, it's completely understandable. But at the least, I hope that uh, the information that I have provided you guys will help you finish these archives with greater ease. I love you all and thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.